can be in the beach, you can be in a beautiful place, but you know, the psalmist said that we will not trade places, you know, the house of God in the most beautiful place. So let's just prepare our hearts as we read this scripture, Psalm 46, and I'd like you to respond in verse 2. So I'll read one, and you guys will read chap verse 2. We'll do responsive reading. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Verse 2. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's all together read verse Verse 10 and 11, once again. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I invite you to quiet your heart, and I just invite you to just in a posture of surrender and receptivity and openness before the Lord. The God of Jacob is with us. He is our fortress. Be still and know that He is God. This is the psalm that's written in the midst of war, earthquakes, desolations be still you know the word be still from the me in, in from the Greek is VK so it says take a vacation take a holiday be still before the Lord relaxed rest in the Lord how was your week this week? Have you been plagued with so much troubles? Have you been exhausted? Have you been very tired? Have you grown weary? Have you felt discouraged? Have you felt alone? Have you felt misunderstood? Have you felt judged by someone, a friend or a family? What do you feel? What are you bringing to the Lord this morning? Or is your heart filled with joy and gratitude for all that the Lord has done all throughout the week? God's word says he is your refuge so I want to invite you right now to imagine God is right here God is beside you whatever emotions you are bringing to the table that God says I see you you are seen by the father and I want you to think about it you are seen by the father the Lord sees you 
Elroy means I am the God who sees. I am the God who sees. Our God is not oblivious to all the difficult emotions we grapple with. I am the God who sees. And He is here. He is Emmanuel. Emmanuel is with us. He understands all your emotions. And He even wants to come and embrace you. And just comfort you. Offer His love. As you open your hands, whatever you need from the Father today. If your heart is broken and wounded, come. Holy Spirit, you are here. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do in our midst. Comfort, healing, deliverance, peace, rest, to relax, to take a holiday, to enjoy the very presence of God. Lord, your word says, you are our refuge and you are our strength. You are a very present help in times of need. Lord, there's, this verse says that even before the trouble or the problem or the crisis comes, that you are already there. You are already present with us in all our troubles. So right now, just lift your hands to God. Find refuge. Take comfort in His presence. Thank you, Abba. He is your dad. He is your father. You don't have to come as a holy person this morning. You can come as you are. He loves you. He welcomes you. And I would imagine the father with open arms, you know, accepting you. Welcoming you. Embracing you lavishing his love on you this morning thank you god thank you father you are the most amazing father you welcome us in our broken places you welcome us in our moments of weaknesses lord in in our most vulnerable moments when we are weak when we are confused when our hearts are broken when our tears Lord, when tears keep coming from our eyes because of the pain, that you are the God who wipe away every tears from our eyes. We welcome you, Father. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are the paracletus. You are the comforter. You are the friend. You are the alley. You are one whom we can call alongside to help us in our times of need. See, if you are needy right now, just come to the Father. Come to this Jesus. Come to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, God. In your presence, there is comfort. In your presence, there is healing. So right now, for those of you who are sick physically or for those of you whose heart is broken, I want you to receive the healing power. Jesus, you are here. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of Jesus, let your healing flow, oh God. Cough, colds, whatever sickness, you name it. You are the God who heals. You are the healing God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God who raised Lazarus back to life is here. And he can raise the dead parts of our lives to life again. Thank you, God. You are the resurrection and the life. You are here. You are alive. Thank you, God. And Lord, we also want to, we are mindful that you are a holy God. We are mindful that you are holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Lord, we want to pray Psalm 51 this morning. Father, would you create in us a clean heart, our God. 
Create in us a clean heart, Lord. And renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, God. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. And renew a right spirit within me. You know, if you're here today and all throughout the week you feel alone. Just, you just feel so alone. Nobody seems to care. But God wants to say to you, you you're not alone. You are not alone. You feel alone. But God says, I am with you. I am for you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lord, we thank you for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, your word says, if you confess your sins, as you confess your sins to God right now, I'll give you a moment. Let's just confess, agree with God. Lord, I have, I have sinned. Lord, I messed up. Lord, I said a word. Lord, my thoughts were not pleasing to you. Lord, my responses, the intentions of my heart are impure. Oh God, would you be merciful? Would you be merciful to us, God? Be merciful. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. And right now, by faith in the name of Jesus, receive God's forgiveness. No more guilt. No more shame. You know, God's word says in Romans 8, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So right now, let there be freedom in this house to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Set our spirit free, God. Lord, whatever entanglements in the name of Jesus and by the power of your spirit, we speak freedom, Lord. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So in the name of Jesus, set our hearts, our mind, our will, and our emotion. Lord, we offer to you everything. We love you, Jesus, because you first loved us. We love you, Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. We commit this time to you. Lord, we pray anointing on the worship team. Lord, anointing on the Sunday school teachers. And Lord, we also remember the Maui people in Hawaii. Thousands, thousands of people lost their homes. Devastation of the fire. Lord, we bring them to you, God, that they will call upon the name of the Lord, that you'll provide shelter, food, clothing, that you will give wisdom to the government in Hawaii on how to provide for whatever the emergency need of your people. Lord, may they call upon the name of the Lord. Truly, you are God, and there is no one else. We bow before you. Just lift up your hands and clap. Let's just give a clap of praise to God. Good morning, church. Can you, ano, pakingan sa mong katapat? Good morning. You are loved by the Lord. You are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's, this morning, we're gonna worship the Lord our God. I and I remember lang na ako, no, tong isa sa worship workshop that we have with Pastor Dave. Ingon si Pastor Dave na, um, as a worship leader, I am not really the worship leader. The true worship leader is the Holy Spirit. Amen? And we are all the worship team. Kita daw, tanan, di lang kami na sa stage, but kita tanan as a congregation. And we are performing before the Lord. Amen? So, okay ba, worship team? So, tanan, member na sa worship team? <laughs> amen? Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let's sing to the Lord that He is great, He is good, He is worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Sige, worship team. Once again, can we give a God a clap offering? 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, God. You're worthy of our worship, Lord. We bless you in this place, Lord. Be lifted high. We worship you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We clap our hands as we sing to the Lord. Lord, we celebrate your goodness in this place. Come on, church. Lord, we worship you in this place. Oh, we sing hallelujah to you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified, Lamb of God. Be glorified in this place, oh Lord. Sing how great is the Lord. Come on. Great is the Lord God Yes, amen. Great is the Lord on high. Great is the Lord on high. The train of his robe fills his temple. Amen. The train of his robe fills the temple. And we cry out highest praise. We cry out Yes, Lord. Highest praise. Once again, can we sing, Great is the Lord God Almighty? Great is the Lord. Lord, we give you glory. Glory to the risen King. Amen. Glory to the Son. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Son. Lift up your hands. Open the door. Let the kingdom go. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Forever be our God. church he is holy amen holy is the lord of and all the earth bow before him amen Open the door. Yes, Lord, we welcome you in this place. And forever be our God. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your holy name. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praises, God. Thank you for dying for us, Lord.
Worship the Lord our God is worthy of our praise, worthy of our worship.
thank you, Lord, that we are your people, God, and that you are our God. Lord, thank you, Lord, for choosing us, Lord, to be your people, oh God, the people of God. Lord, thank you, Lord, for that identity, Lord, that we are your royal priesthood, Lord, set apart for your glory, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you, King of glory, in this place, Lord. We welcome you, King of glory, in this place. We seek your presence, Lord. We seek your face. Lord, we surrender every thoughts, Lord. We surrender every agenda. And we seek you today, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad. Because you are good. And steadfast love endures forever, Lord. Lord, we have seen and we can testify that you are good, Lord, in our lives. And your steadfast love endures forever, God. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord.
of the Lord, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. Lord, You're the one that we desire, Lord. You're the one that we desire, God. Once again, we sing. This is my cry, my one desire. Church, come on.
Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time of worship. Lord, we come before you with humble hearts, knowing that we are nothing without you. We come from dust and we will return to it. But because of the breath of life, we are valuable in your sight. By virtue of creation, we are special. And by virtue of redemption, Lord, we are so special because of you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, thank you for your great love to each one of us. Thank you for your ministering Holy Spirit, moving in this place, Lord, touching hearts, reviving us once again, because you are the one true God we are serving. You live forever, and you are worthy to be praised. To you we give all the glory, honor, and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord and to our leaders, no? So worship, worship team tayong lahat, pero may naglead. So thank you sa mga naglead sa worship. I'd like to start with, uh, because we, we lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, so I, I request to see Tats to play one of the songs, which is, I, I hope this song will minister to you. Um, Kin sa mandiri, walay trouble, walay, walay grief, walay loneliness, walay sorrow. Naman sa tayo mga ups and downs no, sa kinabuhi. Uh, for, for us, my wife and I, we have, like in the past two years, we were, actually, we were so, I don't know if it's an attack from the enemy. But I lost my job. I, I was working for eight years in an NGO. And then I lost it last year, exactly this, this month. So September, if, I don't know if I shared with you, I was crying a lot in, 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 in the dark. <laughs> I talked a lot to my wife, and I talked a lot to the Lord. And I think this, this is one of the songs that came out of that uh, valley where you are really there on the, in the ground. So I'd like you to listen to the song. Uh, this is my eighth song. Uh, the title is Go to Jesus. Jesus is your 
your comfort He is your Lord And He'll restore your soul again Because He said Come unto me Go to Jesus. So I hope you have time to go to him. Because he is the one who is a true friend. He is our Savior and Lord. And when I wrote that song, I was just sitting on the piano. It was 30 minutes, but my, my eyes <laughs> were, were filled with tears. And that was soothing and comforting for me. I hope when you are in that moment of uh, grief or Thank you. When you are sad, when you are troubled, Jesus said, come unto me. Diba? Have you come to Jesus? I hope uh, every day you can go to him and experience his uh, abiding presence. Thank you. Uh, this morning, I'd like to share the second uh, I am metaphorical I am statement of Jesus. And this is a series. I did uh, the first one, two, I think three weeks ago. And I'd like to continue with the second saying, um, I am the light of the world. So we have seven sayings. So this is part two of the second metaphorical statement of Jesus. Let's review the seven sayings of the Lord. But the first one is, I am the bread of life, John 6.35 and the other verses. Number two, which is, we will treat it today. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. Number three, I am the door of the sheep. And the following verses, I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And last but not the least, I am the true vine. So all of these are from the Gospel of John. So why, why did I start with, with uh, this series of this, the I Am Statement of Jesus? Uh, but before we go into the reason of why I started this one, let's go to the scripture reading. I'd like the ladies to read the first slide, followed by the men. So parang uh, responsive reading time. You can sit where you are, okay? Uh, ladies, please begin.
not receive him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born. This is the word of God for all of us. Uh, I know the Lord will speak to us in a special way wherever you are right now. So the second metaphorical I am statement of Jesus, John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. John R. W. Stutt says this, and I, I started with, why did I start with this series of I am? So this is the reason. John R. W. Uh, the, uh, this is... Uh, a quotation from his book, Incomparable Christ. He says, and I quote, For a century and a half, during the 4th and 5th centuries, church leaders were engaged in serious Christological debate. They were, they were actually debating, is Christ really God? Is he fully human as well? Is he not just a prophet like Muhammad or prophet like the other prophets in the, the Old Testament, Isaiah or the others? Now, th these are the four councils that are very significant at the time where they debated about Christ as God and as human. Let's look at the, the councils. The first council is Council of Nicaea, 325 Anno Domini, year of our Lord, A.D. Uh, some says uh, C.E., Common Era. Uh, in the secular books, they call it. Now it's 2023 Common Era. But if you are a Christian, you say 2023 A.D., Anno Domini, Year of Our Lord. We, because we base our calendar in the life and death of Christ. Now, here in this council, they secure the truth that Jesus is truly God. There was a long debate of these Christians there, the bishops and the leaders, the church fathers, uh, uh, those, uh, during those times. In the Council of Constantinople, 381, they secured... That Jesus as well is truly human being, 100%. If in Council of Nicaea, he was uh, declared to be fully divine, after like almost 50 years, 54 years, they said that he is also truly human based on the scriptures, especially the Gospels. Council of Ephesus in 431 secured that Jesus is only one person, 
Though he is fully God and fully human. One person, two, Godhead, <laughs> part of the Godhead, and also fully human, incarnate. The Son of God who was incarnate, becoming human being. And in the Council of Charles, Chalcedon, Chalcedon, 451, they secured that Jesus had two natures, divine and human. He is fully human, 100%, and He is fully God. So, what is the significance of this claim? So, I, I, I will throw to you, I will present and then give answers uh, one at a time. What is the significance of this claim in the first century? Related question to that is, what are the implications when he said, I am the light? What's the meaning of light? Uh, we have lots of lights today. But before, they don't have the bulb, the fluorescent, the incandescent light. They don't have the lead. What, what was the light before in the first century? That was 20, 20 centuries ago. Now, the second question related to that, what was the reaction of the first hearers? So the second uh, question here. Second question. That's the, what were their reaction, the religious leaders at the time, when they heard of this claim? It was the first claim ever of a person. I am the light. Nobody claimed that before. And so what was their reaction at the time, especially the Pharisees? And thirdly, let's look at ourselves and think of what does this claim mean to us now? How do we respond to this claim of Jesus? So let's treat the first question. What is the significance of this claim? When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said... I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's the whole uh, two sentences of John 8, 12. Now, in the first century, light held great cultural, religious, symbolic significance. It often represented knowledge, enlightenment, il illumination, and guidance. Many ancient societies, including the Romans, the Greeks, the Jews, to name a few, associated light with divinity and truth. If you say light, it's coming from divine, supernatural. If you say light, it's the truth. It illuminates. It shows you the way, the truth. Chat GPT. So I, I, if you have Android Chat GPT, I always go to that and ask him a question. So when you quote Chat GPT, this is the quotation, personal Communication, colon, August 7, 2023. Without time. Oh, that, just the date. That's, that's the right quotation of Chad GPT. So that's his answer. Very bright, no? AI. <laughs> but if you go to other references, that's always the case. Let's look at two other references. Arnold G. Prakten Boom, a Messianic Jew in his book, uh, Yeshua, The Life of Messiah from a Messianic Jewish Perspective, uh, he wrote in 2018, page 334, he said in a quote, This is Yeshua's response to the second, key, uh, the second key ceremony of the Feast of Tabernacles, one of the uh, major feasts, no? Passover, Tabernacle, Pentecost, one of the three major feasts uh, of Israel. So, the kindling, kindling of the lampstands, which in Judaism symbolizes the presence of Shekinah glory. I think you have heard that word, Shekinah. The, the presence of God, the holy presence, the glory of God. Yeshua claimed to be the Shekinah glory, the visible manifestation of the presence of God. Unquote. This is from a Messianic Jew. A Jew by blood who believes that Jesus is Lord. Because now, a lot of Jews, they don't believe that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Christ. They are still awaiting for the Messiah. So they are still Judaism, no? the religion. But this Messianic Jew, one of that, Arnold uh, Frachtenbaum, wrote about the, the history of this uh, feast, the tabernacle. And this is very significant when Jesus claimed during the feast of the tabernacle. Now, lamps uh, played important roles during those times. Another quote from Greg E. Gardner in the City of Lights. He said, and I quote, Lamps played important roles, not just in, during the meal or the, the feast of the tabernacle, but in burial customs, in memorial rites, in religious practices. 
By the first century CE, common era is using the secular instead of Anno Domini. So CE is the same with AD. For example, Jews had begun to light lamps every Friday just before the onset of the Sabbath. Sabbath starts at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. Friday. So they light the lamp. What's the picture of the lamp? That's, that's a lamp. Let's, let's look at the lamp during the first century. I, I, I grabbed some photos from, uh, from Google. Uh, photos are not mine. So these are lamps during the first century. These were excavated, uh, the archaeological findings. So these are precious lamps, uh, lamps in the first century. Uh, that, that's what we see here. Now what is Shekinah glory? Exodus 12, 20 to 22 says, After leaving Sokot, they camped at Edom on the edge of the desert. This was the time of the wilderness wandering. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire. That's Shekinah. That's the Shekinah glory. Cloud by day to cover them because they were wandering in the desert and fire by night to guide them so that they could travel by day or night. The Lord's constant presence with Israel. Shekinah. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. It was their guide. Here's a picture I grabbed as well. That's the Shekinah. The fire of God. His presence and the cloud. How I wish God is like that now. No, no. A cloud. Kay di na tayo magpayong. Kailang naari yun siya ba? Ayan. Di na tayo mag flashlight. We don't need light. Because He is the light that will shine. And that presence was around, like around 40 years with them. Imagine God's presence going with them for 40 years. And yet they were so rebellious. Uh, just like us. We know God is, the Holy Spirit is living in us. Pero mag rebuilding punta, no? We still commit sin. We know God is there. But just like Israel, the God of Israel is our God. And the attitude of Israel is still is manifested in us. Now let's go to a word study. Light in, the, in Greek is phos. Phos. Uh, phos. F-O-C-E. When you pronounce it, it's phos. It's long, long uh, O. Oh. Metapho uh, metaphorically, the light of divine truth or spiritual illumination. And so when Jesus said, I am the light, he was not pointing to the literal lamp. No. He was claiming, I am divine origin. I can give you spiritual awakening, illumination, because I am supernatural. That's, that's a claim. Darkness, scotia in Greek, metaphorically, used of ignorance of divine things and its associated wickedness, moral or spiritual darkness. So darkness represents the evil one, and the works of the evil one. Blindness. Spiritual blindness. Light is mentioned in the Bible at least 254 times. In the Old and New Testament. The first mentioned in John, Genesis 1.3. And God said, let there be light. That's actually the light uh, that we have. Physical. Last mentioned in Revelation, Revelation 22.5. And night will be no more. They will need no light or lamp or sun. For the, the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. I hope we will be there. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll be there. So are you also sure? Our light is the Lord God. That's a good place to be. You know, ancient meaning of light, there are a lot of meanings. But let's go to the first meaning of light. Common in all religious spectrum referring to divine nature its manifestation in my mystical experiences, which is called illumination. Your light has come upon me, meaning I am spiritually illuminated. I am awakened spiritually. That's the meaning of saying that light has shown on you. In the Old Testament tradition, light refers to the revelation of God and the knowledge of Him. Psalm 36, 9, just one of the Psalms. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light we see light. 
In you, we are spiritually illuminated. That's the meaning. That's the literal meaning of Psalm 36 verse 9. In late Jewish apocalyptic literature, particularly with Qumran community, if you heard of Qumran, light is used in ethical sense. Light as a as figure of good, of truth, of adher adherence to the covenant with God. When you are walking in the light, meaning you are faithful to the covenant with God. When you are walking in the light, you are living the truth. You are not living in falsehood. You are not living in lies. But you are living in the truth of God. That's, that's a meaning in apocalyptic literature. Let's go to the New Testament literature. Particularly the Gospel of John. Because this is what we're treating today. It expresses the acceptance of the incarnate word. Which is Jesus. We read that one. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The incarnation. Who himself is the light that enlightens every person. So when John says, uh, through the mouth of Jesus, the claim of Jesus, I am the light of the world, the, what, what, what Jesus means, and the writer John, what he is driving at, is the claim of Jesus. Let's, let's proceed to the next slide. The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? Let, let's go first to the Old Testament uh, scriptures, okay? So let's go Isaiah 2, 4 to 5. Uh, this is actually a future scenario, a vision. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Because there's no war. That's, that's the kingdom of God. That's a full coming of the kingdom of God. The consummation of the kingdom of God. So this is future tense. Come, descendants of Jacob, including us, believers of Christ. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. So when Jesus has come the second time, when he came, when he comes again, there will be no war after the Armageddon. No, there will be peace, total shalom, and we will walk in the light of the Lord. In Isaiah 9-2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on whose living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. It's a person. This light is a person. Called, uh, Matthew 4-16 refers to Jesus, no? this, this quotation. Je Zechariah, father of John the Baptist, prophesied saying, And you, my child, he was holding Jesus. Eight months, uh, eight days old. He was dedicated. He was brought to the temple. Will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. To give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sin. Because of the tender mercy of our God. By which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. To shine on those living in darkness. And in the shadow of death. To guide our feet in the path of peace. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Spoken by Simeon, a righteous, devout man in Jerusalem, who was told by the Spirit that he will not uh, die before he sees Christ. He says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. Jesus is not just the light for Israel. He is the light for the Gentiles. Spoken by Simeon. John 3, 20, 21. Everyone who does evil hates the light. And will not come into the light for fear that their, their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly. That what they have done has been done. In the sight of God. Darkness, evil works, light, the righteous deeds. So, you see what John is telling us? John 1, 4, 5, 3, and 19. No, verse 19. In him was life, that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. 
light and darkness. No? Darkness representing the works of the enemy, unbelief, hostility, and light, the truth, Jesus Christ, no? righteousness. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, so this is the claim of Christ. What's the significance? Let's look at this statement. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he claimed to be the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies that he is the light that is coming from God. And he will illumine people, both Jews and Gentiles, to know the truth of God and who is God. Who is God? And the things about God, Jesus will reveal. And that knowledge, that illumination, frees people from Satan's bondage and lies. That's the meaning of the claim. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he says, I fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy, I fulfilled Malachi's prophecy, I fulfilled Is uh, the psalmist's prophecy. I am the fulfillment because I come from the Father. And so what was the reaction of his audience? Nobody ever claimed that. Siguro kung naay mo claim anak karon na liso naman siguro iyang utok, no? That's what they said. But more than being foolish, what they said is you have the you are demonized, you are demon possessed. Magyawyaw ka sa dili mao. That's what the religious leaders say at the time. But Jesus said plainly, "I am the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, and I can give you." Awakening. You know, when you use the word awakening, it is for unbelievers. Their eyes will be spiritually opened and they will know the truth about God. And they will know God Himself. If you use the word revival, it is for the believers who have fallen asleep. Kanang ingon nila na backslide, kinang lag revival. Naabay kinang lag revival dere. The Spirit will move you. The work of the Spirit is to awaken and to revive. No? And when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, actually, it was, I don't know what was the first reaction, but John wrote it. Let's go to the hearer's reaction. You know, the religious leaders who heard the claim of Jesus questioned his testimony. Your testimony is invalid. You claim to be the light from God. Our law says... That you have two witnesses. But you are just alone. But let's look at what Jesus respond. What's the response of Christ? The Pharisees challenge him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. It is. It cannot be admitted in the court of law. Naman tay judge din yun. Pilay kinanglan nga saksi. Judge, attorney. Naman gi witness na. At least dalawa. At least two. Oh, sabi ni Judge Te. At least two. And so the Pharisees, which are, they are also religious leaders and law experts at the time. Jewish law experts. They questioned his testimony. In Balida. No, dili pwede. Ni madawat sa korte. But you know, Jesus' threefold response is this. Number one, my testimony is true because I have, I, I am from divine origin. John 8.14 I am divine. Number two, his testimony is backed up by the one who sent him. God the Father affirmed me. That's what he said. During his baptism, the voice from heaven says, This is my beloved son whom I love. That was the voice. And then third response. The requirement of Deuteronomy 9, 15, 19, to 15, 19 verse 15 to have two witnesses were satisfied. Because the first witness is the word and the miracles of Christ. The second witness, as I said, is the voice of the Father and the presence. In fact, the Holy Spirit was there in the form of dove in the, during the baptism of Christ. So this threefold, threefold response, testimony of divine origin, backed up by the one who sent him, the God the Father, and the fulfillment, satisfaction of Deuteronomy 19 verse 15, to have two witnesses makes his testimony valid. And so what did they say? You know, Jesus rebuked them. He said, you really don't know me. The following verses, we read that. You don't know me, you remain in your sin. And let's look at what this means. You know, to know Jesus 
is to know, can you read this statement about, ready, begin? Okay. They, they cannot receive, they cannot accept the claim of Christ that he is equal to God. Because Deuteronomy 6 say, verse 4, there is only one God. The Lord is one. Israel's God is only one. And here comes a, a person. We know him. We know his father. He is a carpenter. A tekton. Ang monang word nga architect. Craftsman. Kailata. Taga Nazareth ni. At least 50 kilometers from Capernaum where he said and claimed that. But he was in Jerusalem at that time pala. And they cannot accept the claim. And so they were hostile to Jesus. And they rejected Jesus. Because they cannot really accept that he is equal to God. Matthew Henry in his commentary of this particular chapter, this verse, he says, and I quote, The reason why men are ignorant of God is because they are unacquainted with Jesus Christ. Matthew Henry, a very devoted commentary a tra translator of the Bible. Uh, no, he's a pastor and also he, he has made a commentary of the whole Bible. It says this very clearly. If you don't know Christ, you will never know God. Now, here's a 4th, 5th century father, church father, St. Jerome. Says, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. If you don't know Christ because you are not acquainted with the Bible. If you don't know God the Father because you are not acquainted with Christ. If you don't know Christ because you don't read the Bible. You don't meditate the Word of God for us today. And so, how do we respond to this claim at this time in our 21st century? There are just two responses. Let me suggest two responses. Believe and live. Let's go to believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. John 1, 9, 12. Light dispels darkness, which symbolizes unbelief or rejection, hostility, and all evil deeds, which are the work of the evil one. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him. People at the time rejected Jesus. And even today, a lot still reject him. He is the true light, as John says. But this is the catch in verse 12 of John 1. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Uh, for me, my greatest Honor is to be a child of God. Can I see the hands of the children of God? Oh, praise the Lord. So, ing na imong katapad, igsoon ta. Bisag papa imong katapad, igsoon ta pa. Bisag imong bana or asawa, igsoon ta. Brother, sister. No, karang mga sisters sana. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are children of God. Because we acknowledge Him as the divine, the light of God. He has shown upon us. He is the true light. And if we receive Him, that's the promise. We are His children. N.T. Wright and Michael F. Bird in their book, The New Testament in Its World, An Introduction to History, Literature, and Theology of the First Christians, they say, and I quote, Jesus is not merely one option on a religious buffet. It's bond. <laughs> it's not just one option. He is unique, unprecedented, cosmically singular because he is the way, the truth, and the life. The way for all people, Jews, Samaritans, Greeks, and whoever will believe in him. John bids us believe the exclusive claim of the all-inclusive Savior. And quote. Dili man siya parihaan ng it all you can nga mamili kag sudan. O salang kapotahe, There's only one true God. 
His name is Jesus Christ. Now, how do we respond to this claim? Number two, live as children of light. I have uh, chosen like two for at least six verses for us to live as children of light. Number one, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Matthew 5, 14, 16, you are familiar with this? You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp, put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it's, it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. To live as light, as children of light, number one, don't hide your light, but show it. Maybe I said it before, there's no secret agent Christian. Maybe some of your workmates will discover you, Huy, born again, eka? Huwag mo ka magsaba, o mga secret agent. Well, I secret agent, a vulgar. Show it to them and be proud to be follower of Christ. And number two, shine daily by doing good works until people give praise to the Father in heaven. Good works are what glorifies God. Good works are what glorify God. If you are uh, working in the government, do something that glorifies God. If you are a businessman, businesswoman, if you are a, a housekeeper, if you are a student, do something good that will lead people to praise God, not to praise you. Very clear. That will praise the Father. Good works that will lead them to praise the Father in heaven. Sometimes we are mistaken that if we do something good, uh, they will appreciate that. that. That's already good. No, no, no. The good that we should do should lead them to God. But that's the good works. That's a, there's a qualifying uh, statement there. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, the basic use of light at the time, of course, is to dispel darkness. It's dark, you have to have light so that darkness will be gone. You can see the path. But the second purpose of light is to expose darkness. While you have the lamp, you will see everything, no? Like, if you don't have light, you don't see clearly what's in your face, what's in your body. But if you, uh, the light is fully lighted, if you, there's light fully lighted, and you look at the mirror, you can see fully what's, you can see clearly what's in you. So, not just guiding you in the right path, but exposing what are bad things, the, the darkness. Ephesians chapter 8. So to live as children of light, live in all goodness, in all righteousness, and in all truth. No exception. All goodness. Whatever goodness is that. All of it. All righteousness. Whatever righteous things. All of it. All the truth. You have to live in that. Not just a portion of goodness, a portion of righteousness, or a part of truth. If you are a children of light. If you are a child of God, living in the light, all of the goodness should be in you. All of righteousness should be manifested in you. All of the truth should be in you. Seek the will of the Lord and expose the fruitless deeds of darkness. Ayaw katingala nga maglagot ang mga tao sa darkness ni mo. Nga man, light man ka. Madayag man ang ilang daotang buhat I was working in sales before, as I said. And there, it's so hard to live as light. Lami kayo tabunan ang imong pagkakristuhanon. Tago-tago na lang ko kay para makabaligya ko kuan million. I was selling a 5 million, like 1 megawatt. It's so hard to sell. A hard sell ang tawag. So I have to please uh, potential customers. I have to treat them. But I, I am light. Lord, all the goodness and righteousness should be in me. Truthfulness, trustworthiness. Unsa man ako pagbaligya, Lord? Akong mga kaubang salesman, hala, dito. 
Pagkitang gilas para makabaligya yun. Our quota was 30 million a year. Like that. Lord, my integrity is on the... <laughs> Grabe, no? I, I will be judged at the end of the year for salesman here. But should I compromise? Should I play with those things that are in the darkness? And then by the grace of God, I said, no, I have to live the truth. I have to live the goodness. I have to choose righteousness. And God honored that. I, I even exceeded my quota. If you prove, if you trust Him, He will show you miracles. And so expose the fruitless deeds of darkness. Another one in First Thessalonians, You brothers, sisters are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of light, children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, self-controlled, putting on faith and love as breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Let's look at how to live as children of light through this passage according to Paul. Number one, anticipate the second coming of the Lord with gladness. No? Mag-anticipate gani ka, excited. Ayaw ka hadlok nga mo balik na si Lord. Be excited because He's coming. Exercise self-control. Have faith and love as defense against the enemy's attack. Have the blessed hope of Jesus' appearing as your firm foundation. Lord, mubalik mangyag ka. You are the perfect judge. I trust that you will vindicate all the injustices and you will clear all the wrongs. I am excited of your coming again. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. I like the adjective here. His light is wonderful. No? Wonderful. Once you were not a people, but now you were the people of God. Once you had not, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. According to Peter. To live as children of light, live the new identity. You have a new identity. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Those who are in Christ are new creation. Number one, chosen ka, royal ka, holy, special possession of God. Makita na ako sa imong agtang for God's use only. You see the red plate for official use only. Only, ang mga Kristohanon sa agtang nakatatak para lang ni sa ginoo. Di na ni pwede gamiton sa mga kiat-kiat, oh, gagmayng kiat-kiat, JKK. Dili na pwede. Dili na giyot, egson. For God's use only, whether you are, somebody is looking at you, ang wak may nagtanaw na ako, pwede na. No, dili, pwede. You are always God's possession. God possesses you. You are owned by God. And you are royal. You are holy. Set apart. And you are chosen. That's your identity. Live as one. Declare His praises to the nations. Isangyaw. No? Ibutyag. Ikuana. Sa Tagalog pa. Itanghal. No? Paano sa Tagalog po? Sister Jean. Yung declare. Uh, isisigaw ba yan? Uh, ipahayag. Oh, tama, tama. Ipahayag. No? Lahim ang hayag sa Bisaya. God. So, ipahayag. No? Ganun. The same, light. No? Hayag. Uh, sa Bisaya, hayag. Light. This is the message we have heard from Him and declared to you, God is light in Him. There is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Christ Jesus, Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. John says here about living in the light. What? As children of light. What did John say? I have chosen Paul, Peter, and John, no? Authority, the, the apostles. So, live your former sinful lifestyle. 
biyae na judigson. You have to. Uh, it's a 180 degree. No? It's not a 360 degree. Kung 360, you are living in darkness. And 360, you go back. This is what John is telling. No, 180. You move forward to the light. Live as one, as a child of God. And then, fellowship constantly with fellow believers. Sa una, dito yung ka. No? Siga-siga, palong-palong. Karon pagmilig barkada. Uh, two birds, uh, birds of the same feather are are the same birds. But a flock together, no? The same birds put sila. You will be influenced. Your values, your principles, your lifestyle will be greatly influenced by your companion, companionship. And so live your former sinful life. Fellowship with fellow believers. Kinsa pa'y walay small group din ni. Be group. Join na mo. Ana. Pero mas lantan. Continue to depend on the cleansing blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. 1 John 1.9 Nagsunod diha no? Sa kaninga text. So this is the reminders of our great apostles Paul, Apostle Peter, and Apostle John. Let me conclude. This is our takeaway. Only Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the truth, the truth, the light of the world, can provide divine truth and spiritual illumination. There is none other. Nobody can provide illumination rather other than the Lord. Once we receive and follow Him, He dispels the darkness in our lives, hostility, rejection, and the works of evil will be dispelled so that we can freely live in goodness and all goodness in all righteousness and truthfulness to the glory of God the Father. I am the light of the world. That's a claim of Christ. To end, let's uh, declare the Apostles' Creed, the second part. Let's begin. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. So be it. Praise be to God for the message, Pastor June. We are so thankful for that to remind us that uh, we are children of light, no? And that that way is that we have to show our good deeds so that before men, no, our our Father in heaven will be glorified because of our good deeds. And as a children of light, of course, we understand that it's also a good deeds for us to to be uh, expressing our thankfulness to the Lord no, by expressing it to our giving. And so to, uh, this morning, let us uh, prepare our, our heart no, and of course at the same time to give our best to the Lord by giving our uh, tithes and offering. So let it be a reminder to us that as a children of light, it is really an important uh, attitude no, to, to be of showing what is really good deeds before the Lord and it will give glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. And even the Word of God says that as the man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we do not need to give our life the same as with the Lord in a way to be a ransom for many but in our way of giving, we could participate in what the Lord has done as a ransom for many. So let us give our tithes and offering, but before that, let me uh, pray for our giving. Father God, You are so great, Lord God, and we are so blessed, Father, even for the words we have heard this morning. It gives us, Lord God, a reminder, and at the same time, Lord, it nourishes our soul, that, Lord God, it reminds us that we are the light, 
as you are the light of the world, Lord God. We are your representative, Father. And Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, is the one that will always guide us. And as we walk, Lord God, in this world, your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will lead us so that people, Lord God, will see in our lives that light that you are uh, lighting in the light of men, Lord God. So Lord, we thank you, even Lord, for our giving. We express our, our gratitude, Lord God, and our thankfulness through this giving, Lord. And let this be, Lord God, as our, our good deeds before you, Lord God. And let it be for your glory and honor, Lord God. We thank you even for, for these people, Lord God, who have given wholeheartedly these tithes and offering. May you bless them, Lord God, and grant them, Lord God, their desires and provide for them their needs. We give you all the praise and glory and adoration. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may give your tithes and offering now. June to come. Let's be reminded this series of preaching the I am claims of Jesus. It's so powerful. We put it to heart because Jesus is the only person, if you can call him God and also man, to have claimed things far beyond any other religious leader or any founder of faiths or religion. That's why we take heed of those words. Because in them is the very proclamation when he said also, I am the way, the truth, the life. You mark those words. Because those words had no other rival in itself. So, as we follow the series with Pastor June, consider you know, to study that. Because that's the only thing we could remember during our walk in a week to understand the power of God, knowing that we're not just believing for the sake of our beliefs, but those words, His claim of the word I am, stands beyond everything, beyond any claims the world ever had. For our announcement, let me just encourage you um, from men, women, couples, uh, singles, students, uh, we're refurbishing the center. And likewise, we want to use that. The BCI Center is five minutes walk from here. If you go the road, yung unang kanto dyan, you go straight there, you turn left. Before you reach Jacinto Extension is Freedom Street. The second door of that apartment is the new BCI Center. We'll be using that as offices for the, bo uh, the pastors, meeting places for the board and the leaders. It's also a place for us to have a final place for our BLTI. We want to really, when Pastor Dave, Pastor June, and I have been aching na magkaroon talaga tayo ng ganun. The modular way to teach our people. No, not only as a person, walk your life, but things that we need, basic things about our faith. We will do that. You know, it's a place also for Bible study in small groups, a place of prayer, 
a place of practice, no, hindi lang band, even yung video natin, we will provide a room for music and recording. Meron na doon, inaayos namin. There's also a place for us to pray. If you have to, that burden of their needs for people to be prayed for or talagang yung counseling na talaga, there's also a room there. So it's a training. When you enter it, there's a fellowship hall. Ayusin natin yon. And soon, all of us will have a place, no? Here in the center. Ang maganda nun, a few street, uh, konting lakad lang siguro, 20 meters is the new Doña Vicenta Park behind City High. Napakaganda nung park na yun. Walang sinabi yung park sa kabila. So beautiful. So you can just walk in and believe me, God gave us that place. So encourage ko lang yung mga groupings ng small groups. Start scheduling your time so that when we know then we will please get your schedule with uh, Kuya Jim. Ilalagay talaga natin yun so that we will have a place that only in restaurant, coffee shops, or malls we have a center for us to meet. Amen? So prepare for that. While we're preparing that, I want you to go into your groups also to prepare for this. May meeting place na tayo. Okay? Thank you so much. May call on Pastor June. Thank you. So, look forward to going to the BCI Center. Mamaya po yung mga pastors will have a council, pastoral council meeting there. Can you please rise and uh, with your loved ones, uh, declare blessing, no? Affirm and impart the words of God. Uh, friends and family, uh, uh, you can go and Find somebody to pray with and declare the blessing of the Lord. So, around three minutes. Wind up, wind your prayer, so blessing. close in prayer. Father, we thank you for the joy of being with our brothers and sisters. Thank you for the joy of singing songs that glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, for the peace that passes all understanding, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
Lord, thank you for your people who are here, expectant of your blessing, dear God. And Father in heaven, we declare that you are our living God. Lord Jesus, we declare that you are the light of the world. You give us illumination. You took us away from darkness into your kingdom of light. And so I pray for your people that this week we will choose to walk in the paths of righteousness. Lord, keep us blameless. Lord, keep us upright. Keep us righteous by your grace. And Holy Spirit, we pray that we will yield to you. We will continue to discern your will. And we will walk according to your will and purpose. To the students, Lord, who are going back to their schools, I pray, Lord, for your wisdom to be upon them, Lord. Provision even for each family. For those who are conducting business, Lord, expand their horizon, Lord God. For those who are working in the government or even the private sector, Lord, make them godly agents of your kingdom, salt and light of the earth. Help them to live as your possessions, dear God. Lord, help us to stand for the truth and to show them the light because light guides and exposes darkness. For those who are celebrating their birthday, thank you for another year. For those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, we celebrate their faithfulness, dear God. Continue to sustain our brothers and sisters to walk in the light because you are the light of the world and we are also children of light. Brothers and sisters, receive this benediction from Jude 24 to 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty dominion and authority before all time now and forevermore amen and amen God bless you all